Hey, you're in the crowd, what's up? In this video, you see some amazing new race tool features for Pure Vector and Bitmap Texture Vector Art setup and animation. So let's start with the question. How cool would it be if you could create 2D character animation without having to resort to those boring automatic atlas generations, which gets even worse when you have to regenerate them any time that you edit your bitmap graphics? Of course, you can already do that using pure vector art and characters. But sometimes using textured vector graphics is a much better solution because bitmap graphics are really well suited for smooth gradients or the tailored textured graphics, so why not using the best of both worlds? You can already use in ray spline, but actually positioning those textured graphics manually can be quite time consuming and worse yet, it'll never be very precise. So what if you could create your own UVs or texture mapping coordinates right inside Inkscape or Illustrator or whatever vector editing application you use and bring it precisely inside Unity after texturing it in Photoshop? Sounds like too much to ask? No longer. You can now do it easily using Rage tools, latest Pivo tools and advanced macros. Let's start checking the new Pivo Tools branch tutorial that comes within Rage Tools. So simply open the scene. In this case, I have disabled the help text. And then you can see that you have a, a Villas object preset. Basically, what it, you have to do is to import the SVG file. It has already minimal and maximum densities set for you, good starting values. Okay, so basically, what it does is import your art as is. As you can see, there are some uh, small dots or small circles which basically are going to define the pivot points for those segments. And uh, of course, there are some overlapping outlines here and we'll see how to handle this inside Unity. But the first thing we're going to do is just add a pivot tools component and uh, it automatically adds a rage group. Okay. Um, which gets automatically filled for you with the found rage splines within this entire hierarchy. And now uh, we'll set the mode from geometric, which the default, to per branch, the new option since rage tools release 1.1. So once you click on center, um, you see that the dots have disappeared. The cool thing now is that every one of these parts now have its pivot points set correctly. I'll just undo until the previous states, just to show you that originally all rotation centers, all pivot points were set to the world origin, which is the default right after you import an art using SVG in. So to see the pivot point, remember you have to have this option set to pivot. So again, simply selecting Villas, clicking center, using per branch, and it's gonna delete the so-called pivot reference, which were those circles. So what does it do uh, to get this result? All it has to do really is to use every single shape, which is named as pivot, which has the string pivot in its name as a part of it. It then finds the geometric center for this specific shape. Okay. It's going to be somewhere around here. And then it applies this rotation center, this pivot, to the parent object. So that for arm left, in this case, is going to pivot around this specific point in space. Okay, it does that hierarchically for the entire group of shapes. And as you can see, all the pivot named shapes are just references for these new rotation centers, right? So you don't need them after you carry out the operation. That's why we have this automated delete pivot references option, which basically gets rid of them for you as soon as it recenters your shape. So what we have to do now is make sure that the outline is actually behind those scan shapes. To do that, we simply pick the outline shape here and just move it along the Z axis so it's physically behind the skin colored shapes, right? So we just set this to say one, the, the group that includes the fill and the outline. That's the one we want to rotate. Um, and you see that it's now uh, as we want it with the added advantage that the outline is not 
place it in front of the t-shirt which may be or may not be the effect you want so simply ordering it along the z it's going to give you the possibility to order it how you want simply um, uh, just behind the, the skin of the arm but still in front of the t-shirt or behind everything so very very flexible uh, to get whatever uh, visual result you want we would then carry on with the alignment thing here just moving things to the back like this one this outline here you see how useful it is to name things properly it really does help you to find them after you import them um, okay this one you could also use modal select if you prefer of course um, yep and this one and yeah and this one as well and there you have it so very very simple to set up your character easily and quickly since this is a separate parts character its animation speed is very very smooth even on mobile devices just make sure that if you're using unity's animation window to add constraints from each thing that you want to animate the easiest way to set this up is using the race tools macro Race constraints create controller make sure you have whatever root object you want to control for your animation then create a controller it's gonna create this controller at the parent level of the selected hierarchy so in this case make sure you move it out of your race spline structure okay you can also add a new object for instance let's call this one animator and just group this here and make sure we have selected whatever we want it to follow so it automatically assigns the follower field and then you can make this live so now whenever you rotate this one you rotate the constrained shape and this allows really smooth and fast operation within the animation window uh, since it doesn't have to deal with the many variables present in raised plane so that if for instance we create a new clip here let's call it just test uh, rotation on Z adding curves and just move in here then reassign here you see we are on animation editing mode due to the red color of the play button of unity so that I'm actually creating keys on the fly so if I come to half second um, and I move it a bit behind I can then easily add a new keyframe course you can then flatten the tangents and play with them if they're free you have many options to edit here okay so once you do that you can see how smooth the operation inside the animation window is actually if you try to do that straight using a raised spline hierarchy the performance here is going to be terrible so make sure to use raised constraints for all your animation window needs now let's see how I have set up this character inside illustrator and how to do the same within Inkscape. Okay, so within Illustrator, you have a very powerful control of how to lay out and set up your art using the layers window, layers panel, uh, because the layers and the groups and even the shapes themselves are displayed in the same window. So that if you see here, for instance, the head is just a group, right? So that you can select it separately. One of its child shapes, it's named pivots okay I could name it whatever I want doesn't really matter as long as it has the string pivot in it it's gonna work and if I enable the visibility of this guy and select it you can see that it's nothing but a simple disk shape just created using the lips too so whatever you want to have uh, an independent pivot make sure to have a pivot name it shape right under it and you can actually do this in as many levels as you want the pivot tools branch is automatically gonna do this hierarchically for you okay just remember that whatever the grouping order that you set inside your vector drawing art is going to be the same order how the shapes are going to be displayed or ordered along the z-axis so that for instance here you have leg right as the bottom most or most distance in the z-axis for instance if i want the head to be a child of t-shirt 
I'd group them here. If I want arm left, come here. I'd do the same. I could do the same for uh, this hips separate part or just move the shirt itself under hips. And I could then reorder the arm so that it's physically behind the actual t-shirt. So I just move it and you see that it's reordered here. And when I import it inside Unity, it's gonna be ordered just the same. Okay, as long as you have the pivot set as a child, it's gonna work fine. As for the pivot shapes, it doesn't really matter. Whatever shape you draw here, it's gonna be removed as you saw within Unity. I just use ellipse because it's a bit more visually obvious that it's gonna work as a pivot center. But if I want, I can use a rectangle uh, whatever shape I want, doesn't really matter. It's gonna just take this geometric center of the shape to use as a pivot point for its parent group, okay? With then Enkscape, the easiest way is probably using the Layers panel to organize and order your shapes. Remember that groups, as I've selected here since I've simply opened the SVG file and it's only got groups defined in it, I don't actually get any layers here. But there are a couple ways to work with groups similar to how you'd use Isolate Selection inside Illustrator. Simply double click the shape and you see that it's now on a subgroup, right? So I'm no longer selecting the entire root group, I'm on a lower group level. And then I can simply select one of its members, in this case the pivot object. And then I can simply right click, select Object Properties and name it to whatever I want. As long as you have pivot in its name, it's going to serve as a pivot for the parent group. To go back to the highest level, just hit Ctrl Backspace and you're back to Hoot Groups level. Likewise, whatever order used by your groups visually is going to be the order they will be displaced along the Z axis inside Unity. Of course, you're not just limited to single characters. You can actually import an entire game art using a single SVG file and automatically set all your pivot points for even GUI elements and every relevant game asset with a single click. So, as you can see, we have, for instance, the rocket cow here. We have a pivot center defined for the rocket cow itself for this entire shape group. And we have one pivot for the rocket flame. If I wanted, I could scale it, be able to scale it up and down to make a kind of a shimmering effect. So you see how many advantages you can get from using this tool. And it can go much more complex than that. Let me just disable the rocket cow and then show you the entire setup for the ant. So we have an ant orbiter whose pivot is set to the center of the world so that I want to be able to rotate the ant entity around the center of the world and I have within the ant an entire structure of pivots. So for instance I have the back of the body with its own pivot, I have the leg back with its own pivot and uh, the front of the body with its own pivot and the middle leg and the leg front, the head, the antenna and so forth. So, very easy to have a complex setup like that, define it within a single SVG file. The only thing missing, of course, was a way to export these gradients, since, of course, radio gradients aren't supported directly by RadioSpline. So, to do that, I've separated the shapes, I've sampled the gradients, applied them to square-like shapes, so they get perfect one-to-one -one proportion, and I've imported them inside Photoshop. The problem then was how to properly place them back within raised plane. You see that applying the material and scaling it and positioning it by eye is very, very error prone. You probably won't have perfectly aligned textures no matter how hard you try. It was necessary to find a way to do that automatically. And that's where the new clone UV's macro kicks in as you'll see in the next part of this Advanced Pivot Tools tutorial video.